Hey guys, it's Mike. Welcome back to the shop. This week's video is going to be a fitting mixed bag of goodies. Got a, a few different things I'm working on. Um, got some new tools over the past week and getting some projects lined up. Um, the tool I got was a call it chuck. Um, Randy Richard told me about uh, a guy in Sacramento that had a uh, Sorgen. It's a uh, hard inch is who makes it. It's their Sorgen Model 2. Uh, and it's a 2J call it chuck. And when I got it, I was hopeful that I could just remachine the back plate that was on it. But it's got a shoulder in the back, and the shoulder's just a little bit too narrow to work for the D14 spindle. So I ordered a new back plate. Unfortunately, I got a D13 back plate instead of a D14. So I'm sending that back and have a new one on the way that's hopefully going to be an actual D14 spindle so that I can <clears throat> start that machine process. So I'll show you guys the new chuck um, and all the goodies that came along with it. And then I've got the um, Smithy leveling that we're going to be doing this week. I finally decided how I'm going to make the, the brackets for actually leveling it. I've got the base done pretty much, it's all welded out, it just needs the, uh, the lip on the bottom for the leveling bolts to sit in. So I'm going to get that done, that's what we're going to start off with this week, and then depending on, on time and my kids, if they behave or not, I'm going to move on to the hydraulic press and try to get that, um, all the holes drilled out in that to get everything welded together. And then I've got a piece of, uh, I thought I had it sitting here, I must've moved it. I had a piece of tubing um, from another project that I think will work perfect for the braces across the middle um, for the bottom of the press, for the where the press arbors go. So <clears throat> I'm gonna do some measurements, cut that, and get it all mounted up and ready to go. Um, I might have to buy another piece of steel for the base. Um, the way I was originally going to do it, I don't know if it's going to work, so we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So let me turn the camera around and I'll show you the new uh, collet chuck that I got. Alright, so here's the uh, the new collet chuck. Um, got a little bit of chips on it from setting it down on my table here. Apparently didn't do a good enough job cleaning it off. But <clears throat> I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to, to read. It's a uh, Hard End Brothers, Elmer, New York, made in the USA. And it is a sword. I think that's Sorgen, is how you say that. Speed Chuck, number two. And <clears throat> the back plate. This is a five and three quarter radius here, and I've taken the back plate off already. So this is the old back plate. This surface here is, is machine smooth, and then this is a, a, a real light press fit into the, the back here. So <clears throat> I was hoping that I could machine this side to fit a D14 spindle. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit the the bolt pattern the three hole pattern is just a little bit outside this radius so <clears throat> And it's not thick enough here to be able to put the uh, the D14 Sorry thick enough here to put the D14 hosts in so I'm gonna have to completely machine up a new one I got one, but like I said, it's a D13, so this diameter is slightly different, and then the hole pattern for the, the three posts is just a little bit smaller. But this is going to be pretty much what the new one looks like. It's just going to have a bigger radius back here, and that should be getting here sometime within the next week. And then in addition to the chuck, I also got a fairly nice set of collets. Um, it ranges from one quarter to one and three eighths. And the only problem with any of them was this one here has a little tiny chip out of the shoulder. And that's a three quarter, which there's another three quarter here. 
And these are all hardened. Um, I think these are the only ones that aren't aren't marked, and these are aluminum jaws. And I don't know if these were machined by somebody or if they're actually sold like this, but I don't know if I'll really be using these at all. Mainly I'll be using um, the 7 8 and then probably inch and a quarter for doing the <clears throat> most of the rifle breaks I do are 7 8 outside diameter. Most of the shotguns are one and a quarter outside diameter. So I got all this included. Um, so I got to thank Randy. It was an absolutely amazing deal. Um, I've been looking and looking and looking and I just haven't found the right deal. And Randy told me about this and it all worked out perfectly. And the seller actually even came here to, to my shop and dropped them off. He was coming up to, to visit, he had some time off, so he brought it to me and I look, took one look at it and said, yeah, I'll take it. Everything looks like it's in pretty good condition. Doesn't look like there's anything that's been damaged or really even used all that much. Most of these collets are, are perfectly smooth on the inside. Some of them don't even look like they've ever been used. So I'm pretty excited about getting this thing set up and uh, machining the back plate for it so we can actually use it and I think it'll make things a lot easier for me when I'm making multiple breaks at a time to be able to take a break out put another one in and have it be pretty much exactly the same. Okay, right, so here's the uh, frame that I welded out. I've got it just sitting in the one corner here. I've been trying to figure out how to put the ears. I was going to do an ear coming out here and on this side do it this way and on the opposite side put the ear here and this would be the outside well this would be the inside but I'd rather have the ears on the corner here so what I decided to do is I'm going to take some angle and actually that's not right I'm gonna come out like this I'm gonna cut some pieces of angle so that they come together in a 45 here so the angle will be welded here and here and I'll just nip this this is just for mainly for aesthetics um, there'll be a weld seam here um, and then I'll put my hole here and <clears throat> even though I don't think I'll really need it I think I'll probably weld just a piece of triangle in here and here just to give it a little bit more rigidity and that way the adjustment bolts will be underneath which I'm sitting on something here so it's wobbling like crazy there we go so <clears throat> I wanted the the smithy raised up a little bit. I'm I'm six six, so having a, a short, you know, standard size table, it really feels like I'm bending over. So I want to raise it up a little bit more, and this way it'll give me um, move that out of the way. These are the uh, adjustment feet that I got. Um, I want to say I got these from McMaster Car. So these will go down onto the uh, floor. And this bracket here. This will be the edge of the table, or the, the frame, and these will be underneath, and I'm going to, uh, I might get some different nuts, but <clears throat> I'll put a, a heavy washer on, drop it down on top, and then I'll be able to, to level everything, and this gives me, you know, it automatically gives me one inch, no matter what on on both sides and then I'll be able to raise 
the lower side up. My garage is this like cant towards the door, the uh, big garage door. So one side is is lower than the other, but <clears throat> I'll get these all cut out and welded together. Um, one of the reasons why I brought it over here is so I could use my little pencil here and kind of take measurements to see how big it's going to need to be. But I think this will work out pretty well. I've got a, a ton of little scrap pieces that I can cut the triangles out here. And like I said, I don't really think I'll need it, but better to, to need it and not have it. Or have it and not need it than need it and not have it. So let's uh, get these measurements done and then I'll bring you back when we start cutting everything out. So here's the uh, pieces we're cutting out. They're three inches from end to end. And three inches from here to here. And that way, this side will be the side sticking out. So here's the, uh, the first one cut out. You can kind of see what it's going to look like here. Um, I'm cutting them three inches from this edge to the back of this edge. And that gives me more than enough material here. I could probably even go shorter, but this way I think it'll work out just fine. So these will be butted up against this edge here. The other one will be butted up against this one. I'll grind a, a good V groove in here and weld this out. And it'll be welded across all the top and bottom edges so that'll be what it looks like when we're when we're done all right so i'm just checking the the fit up of the ones i cut here and it looks like it's gonna work out pretty well all right so i got all the pieces cut out and you can kind of see i got a little bit of, of clean up to do um, all of them fit together pretty nicely except for this one here, the cut was a little bit kitty wampus, so they're not matched up good, but I think I'll be able to pull some of the, grind some of this down here, because this is what the, the blade came out a little bit. So I think I can grind that down, just this corner, and that'll fit up, fit up nicely. And then they'll go on like this. And I'll grind the, a V out there to, to get a good solid weld in. I don't think I'm going to put the other bracket uh, gusset pieces in. I think that with this made like this, I think it'll be more than strong enough. The, the whole smithy altogether weighs about 900 pounds. And so I'm going to have two plates like this set up, one on each side. I really don't think I'm going to need all that much because these aren't going to be supporting a whole heck of a lot of weight by themselves. I'll make sure I get a good weld across the tops and a good solid weld here that I can grind down flat to drill through. And I think that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull all these, throw them in the vise and get the the edge ground onto them. I'm just getting all the pieces tacked on here real quick with my MIG gun. Um, I'm using a little spacer plate underneath each corner. I've got a bunch of uh, quarter inch aluminum pieces. I want those underneath when I weld and it was just easier I've got four of them, so I just threw four on each corner and I'm clamp these on. I'm just tacking them up real quick.
This is kind of a outside the range for my little MIG welder, but it'll work for just throwing some tacks on. Alright, I figured I'd, since I finished the welds, I would show you guys how everything turned out. Um, <clears throat> this is almost completely flush here, and it got pretty good penetration. Um, this one cut away a little bit on the edges, but it's fine. Um, I welded the top parts. This side, I, I don't, don't ask me about that little bit right there. He doesn't matter. And then on the, the bottom side, I threw some short stitches on there. Um, I think with everything else being welded, that it'll hold just fine. I ran beads up the sides across the top and everything. And uh, I realized after I was done that I needed to cut twice as many of these because I have the other base and I didn't cut these out when I had everything set up. So I'm going to go get those set up, get everything else cut, get the other one welded out, and then uh, try to get these things cleaned up to be painted. All right, I'm going to try to get a video of some arc shots with the stick welding. It's kind of difficult because it's kind of in the way. But I'm going to give it a try and see how it comes out. drill the holes here and make sure I have the right size in here. It's half inch, nine sixteenths, and five eighths. So I've got it ready. I'm gonna use my older drills. It has a uh, variable setting on the drive so I can set it to a specific point and then that's as fast as it'll turn and this is just an old uh, skill brand so let me turn the camera around and we'll try to cut our first couple holes out here all right so we're gonna get the first hole here just right there
are starting to die on me. Yep. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm not using this drill. Oh, cordless DeWalt out here. broken pieces. I don't know how stable I'm going to be able to hold the camera here, but that's all done. So I'm going to see if I can't salvage this spot. chattered looking hole. Hopefully they won't all be that bad. I think part of the problem with that one was just the uh, fact that it had been partially drilled with that rotocut. Yay, so that's the first of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen, sixteen. A lot of holes. <laughs> I'm not gonna bore you guys with a bunch more drilling. All right. Well, I got the hydraulic press, all the holes drilled for all my points for the raising and lowering the table, and I threw couple extra little pieces I had on the bottom, threw some casters on, and tacked them on real quick. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it in this video. I've got the uh, table, I guess you'd call it, done. I just need to weld the pipe in between the two pieces and then get the pins. Um, and then I need to get some 4x4 plate to make the guides to keep the piece that pushes down um, in line. And that'll be it. Alright, so the leveling bases are all painted up, put together. Um, Still need to actually lift the smithy up to set it down inside of here, but I'm happy with how they turned out. The uh, the finish is that hammered metal um, spray paint, and <clears throat> that's what the smithy base looks like. So hopefully it'll match up pretty good, and then. Finally got my D14 backplate, so I'll be able to get the collet chuck machined, or get the backplate machined up for the collet chuck, and be able to get going with that. Hi right, guys, well that's it for this week. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna try to get some stuff reorganized in here, get this collet chuck. Uh, backplate machined up for next week's video. Um, probably gonna do 
the Everlast review next week. If everything goes right, um, I'll have the time to get that done. I've got a couple orders coming in. Um, one for a completely custom muzzle brake that nobody makes, or that the customer can't find anybody that makes one like that for the thread that he, uh, he wants. So I've got a custom uh, oddball metric tap uh, in the mail. And as soon as I get that, the customer is going to send me the brake that he's got um, because it's got a, it's for a, an AK type uh, rifle or pistol. And it's got a spring detent that's clocked off dead center. So he's sending me the brake that he has so that I can measure and get the, get the cant off to the side, wherever that needs to be. So that when I machine the brake for him, everything works all, you know, lines up and, and uh, it's true to the world when he's firing it. So I think that'll be a pretty interesting break to make. And then I've got a couple more shotgun breaks coming in, um, or orders coming in. So I'll probably throw some of those in next week's video too. So I hope you guys liked it. Have a good night.